So we will discuss about uh, cardiac channelopathies today. And cardiac channelopathies, as the name shows, it deals with different channels, and those channels are mainly of sodium and uh, potassium and calcium channel in the heart. And this cardiac channelopathies is mainly due to the abnormality in the proteins of the cells that are responsible for generating an impulse. And that impulse once generated is transferred in the muscles of the heart or myocardium and then it create an electrical activity and that electrical activity generates the heartbeat. So if we know that these channels are not functioning properly then that electrical impulse is not generated and if not generated the rhythm of the heart that is formed or the heartbeat that is produced as a result of that electrical impulse or electrical activity is not normal or it's abnormal and it will cause ultimately so many different arrhythmias and dysrhythmias of the heart. So these abnormalities, as I mentioned, is due to proteins of the cells and different genes. We will discuss later on different genes which are responsible for the uh, functioning of these proteins of the cells. They are affected. Their mutation result in this abnormality. So cardiac channelo Pathies. Pathies or pathy is the disease or abnormality. So cardiac is the heart, pathy is the disease. And when we talk about channels, I mentioned these are the channels of sodium channel, potassium channel, and we have different channels or different electrolytes which are responsible for the conduction in the myocardium. So cardiac channelopathy is commonly associated conditions, we can say, of the cardiac channelopathies. One most common is the long QT syndrome. If you see this EKG here, that's the EKG. We have the four common waves or three waves, but four uh, spikes, you can say we have P wave here. This is the Q wave, this bend down. This peak is the R. Then we have S and then this is the T wave. So prolonged QT here, the distance between the Q and T wave that's known as QT interval. So the distance between Q and T is the QT interval. And this QT interval is prolonged in congenital long QT syndrome. Normal QT interval, we can say it's from 0.4 to 0.44 milliseconds. So this if it's prolonged, then it will be more than 0.4 to 0.44. This P wave here is due to the, uh, it shows atrial depolarization, atria upper chamber of the heart. QRS is due to the ventricular depolarization. Depolarization is when the heart is contracting. And these waves are generated as a result of the contraction of the heart. So we have P wave, then we have QRS, and then this T wave here, this is generated as a result of the repolarization or relaxation of the heart. So we have the depolarization phase, then we have repolarization phase, and this repolarization phase is the phase that is mostly affected with 
congenital QT syndrome. So it's a disorder of the repolarization, relaxation of the heart. And when during relaxation of the heart, the impulse is not transferred properly or it is not trans, uh, transmitting normally, this pro, uh, re relaxation phase becomes long and slow and it can lead to different arrhythmia. So, that's congenital long QT syndrome, one of the cardiac channelopathies and one of the most common cardiac channelopathies. The other one is Brugada syndrome. It's early repolarization syndrome. And I already mentioned this is the uh, disorder associated with the repolarization. All these conditions we will discuss, the, they are mainly in which QT is prolonged. So you can simply say this is just a subtype of the QT, long QT syndrome because in Brugada syndrome also QT interval is prolonged. So it's early repolarization syndrome and now we have the idea in the mind that repolarization, when we say repolarization is the relaxation phase and it's the phase usually after the contraction of the ventricle or after the depolarization, this is the segment where the repolarization or relaxation is occurring and any prolongation here is the prolongation of the QT interval. Next we have the another catecholaminergic polymorphic ventricular tachycardia. Ventricle depolarization is QRS complex here. This is the ventricular part and tachycardia, tachy means fast, cardia is the heart. So when there is ventricular tachycardia, the, the ventricles are contracting really fast, rapid, and then you will see mostly the changes in the QRS complex because that's the part that is responsible for the contraction of the ventricle and it causes ventricular tachycardia. And when we say the word catecholamines, catecholamines is the uh, system which is responsible in fight or flight response. And usually in fight or flight response, when different catecholamines are released, like epinephrine, norepinephrine, dopamine, there is natural response in which the heart starts beating fast and there is a tachycardia. So catecholaminergic polymorphic ventricular tachycardia. And then we have uh, progressive cardiac conduction disease as I mentioned in my intro also that there is abnormality in the conduction generation or transmission of the impulse mainly because of the defect in the protein of the cells that generate the impulse or electrical activity. So there is conduction disease and there is sick sinus syndrome, again sinus node. SA node is the node which is the pacemaker of the heart and the, it generates the pace and it, that pace is transmitted and it causes ultimate contraction. Sick sinus syndrome can ultimately lead to so many conditions, sinus bradycardia, sinus arrest that we will discuss later on. So just to describe what are cardiac genelopathies, these are few things that mainly cover the topic.